CTG. Okay. Well, CTG is used to monitor the condition of the fetus inside the uterus, if normal or abnormal. In order to say normal CTG, you need four points to present at the same time. In that point, I can say this is a normal CTG. The only exception is one of them, and I will talk about this soon. Okay? So these four points include the first one is fetal heart rate should be between 110 to 160 beat per minute not more than that not less than that okay so the second point will be no deceleration well i mean by no deceleration is no decrease of fetal heart rate below baseline and i will explain that clearly on a sample ctg the third point is variability 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 mean the fetal heart rate should be variable from one minute to another minute between about 6 to 25 beat per minute i mean if in one minute the fetal heart rate is about 110 and the other minute the fetal heart rate 120 or 130 that's all known as variable and all of it is normal and the fourth point which is the last one is acceleration of fetal heart rate and that's mean an increase in fetal heart rate above baseline if these four points present in the same time well i can consider this ctg as normal ctg if one or more of these four points not present in the same time then i consider this ctg as abnormal ctg the only exception is acceleration if the ctg all of it normal except no acceleration in this ctg then i can also consider this ctg as normal ctg consider that the other three points present and all of them are normal okay okay if you look at this ctg sample well this represent the fetal heart rate and this one represent uterine contraction okay first of all the mean heart rate range about 125 beat per minute okay this represent the baseline of fetal heart rate and the minimum heart rate here in this pattern is about 110 beat per minute and the max heart rate here is 150 so it's still within the normal range which is 110 to 160 beat per minute so the first point is normal which is a fetal heart rate within normal range the second point which is no deceleration if you look here on this ctg pattern you will see that there is no deceleration deceleration represent by sudden decrease in fetal heart rate below the baseline it's a sudden decrease in fetal heart rate so here there is no deceleration so the second point is normal the third point which is variabilities well if you look here you will see that the baseline is 125 beat per minute and it will increase to 150 and it's also decreased to 110 beat per minute so there is a variability and the variability between 25 to 15 and same like that so it's within normal range of variability so the third point is also normal and the fourth point which is the last one is acceleration here this present the acceleration so also the fourth point is normal so this represent normal ctg and even if no acceleration in this ctg and all others are normal as you see here so it's also represent a normal ctg so this represent normal ctg now let's talk about abnormal ctg well first of all fetal heart rate i said the normal fetal heart rate is between 110 to 160 beat per minute so the abnormal range and the abnormal fetal heart rate is if below 110 it's called fetal bradycardia 
and if it's more than 160, it's called fetal tachycardia. The most important cause of fetal bradycardia is a sleeping baby. And the most important cause of fetal tachycardia is maternal fever. Okay? The second one, which is, I said normal CTG should contain no deceleration at all. Okay? So abnormal CTG will include deceleration. And the deceleration has three types first early deceleration the second one is late deceleration and finally is variable deceleration if you look at this picture here this represents uterine contraction and this one represents fetal heart rate well here in the first part here the fetal heart rate decreases immediately with uterine contraction so this one is facing this one so it's a facing between uterine contraction and deceleration occur in the same time so the most common cause is head compression and mostly it's a benign and need no treatment at all look at this it's facing this one this one is also facing so this represent early deceleration and it's called early deceleration Look at this one. Here, the fetal heart rate deceleration occur after uterine contraction. So that's called late deceleration. So it's occur after uterine contraction, like this. And the most common cause here is fetal hypoxia and acidosis, mostly due to uteroplacental insufficiency, okay? And it's danger and need treatment. And the third one, will be variable deceleration if you look here you will see that fetal deceleration of heart rate occur not related to uterine contraction it's variable it's not related to it so it's called variable deceleration and it is the most danger one and it's occur due to umbilical cord compression so it need immediate treatment okay so it's early deceleration late deceleration and variable deceleration okay so the early deceleration is occur due to head compression and it's mostly benign and need no treatment while the late deceleration is occur due to fetal hypoxia and acidosis and it is danger and need treatment so the next step will be fetal scalp ph checking the final one, which is variable deceleration, is occur due to cord compression, and it is very, very dangerous, and need immediate treatment. So the treatment will be step by step. The first step is to stop oxytocin infusion, if the patient already on oxytocin infusion. And the second step will be O2, in order to increase oxygenation of maternal blood, and that will go to the fetal circulation and help the fetus to survive and the third step will be a fluid the idea of it is to increase the blood pressure of the female in order to increase the cardiac output in order to increase the blood supply to the fetus and help the fetus to survive and the fourth step is left lateral position the idea of it is to release the weight and the pressure of the uterus over the aorta so that will lead to an increase of blood supply to the fetus and help him to survive and if these all steps not working then the final step will be cesarean section if all these steps not working so that's all what you need to know about ctg for amc mcq exam for full course you can contact us through amcqbook at gmail.com thanks and goodbye